You're watching Stand Up on the Spot at Skankfest. Our next live show is October 24th in New York City. Get tickets at jeremiahwatkins.com. Come see Mark Norman, Tommy Pope, Jordan Jensen's Redemption Set, and surprise guests we can't even announce yet. And hit that like button, comment, and make sure you're subscribed to the show. Thanks so much. Now please enjoy Stand Up on the Spot. What's up, everybody? My name is Jeremiah Watkins. I'm your host of Stand Up On The Spot, and this is how the show works. We, the comedians, are coming up here with no prepared material. We're going to ask you guys, the audience, for suggestions. You're going to yell stuff out, and we're going to create Stand Up On The Spot based off those suggestions. Who's ready to kick this show off? What do you say, huh? <laughs> All right, can I get a suggestion? Pina coladas. Did someone say bed bugs? Dude, I got bed bugs ironically in Vegas one time. And I think that that's worse than bringing home an STD to your partner. <laughs> bed bugs, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Like, I've had cancer and bed bugs was worse than cancer. <laughs> Bed bug, dude, bed bugs is so gnarly. You literally like just keep finding like, like the cancer went away, but like the bed bugs kept coming back. <laughs> the bed bugs like, like we had to throw out our bed and that's bad. Like when like, you know how much cum and stuff goes on bed? It, like there's so much fluids and different stuff. Like, like, like yeah, so such gnarly stuff and like bed bugs, like having to throw that out. By the way, these guys, two guys in the front are wearing sunglasses and look like weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, dude, I'm on ketamine right now, dude. This festival has been insane, dude. I don't even know what a bed bug is, dude, but I just want a bed. That's all I want, dude. <laughs> bed bugs are gnarly. That's all I'm trying to say. What else? Uh, what else we got? Legalizing heroin and and Taylor Swift. Um, Taylor Swift is uh, so I'm a Chiefs fan, uh, and Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey right now, uh, and I kind of wish that she was dating Patrick Mahomes over Travis Kelsey because uh, I just would want to hear his post game uh, interviews with Taylor Swift, like, in the bedroom. <laughs> like, I played real hard today. <laughs> I really left a lot out on the field. Um, she sucked my dick really good. That was pretty cool. Uh, we went all the way. Uh, I, she let me in her end zone. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say she's a wide receiver. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about it, and uh, I left everything out there. Next question. <laughs> Oh, uh, what else we got? What well, maybe something around here? Hot air balloons. Hot air balloons. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is the kindest woman at Skankfest. <laughs> Literally a man back there was like, legalize heroin! Legalize it! I want to hear you talk about it! And this sweet angel of a woman's like, hot air balloons? Can you do something with that, Jeremiah? Uh, I've been in a hot air balloon uh, once, and uh, it's pretty cool. You don't realize how hot it is. <laughs> There's an open flame that's just like, <laughs> like, and I always like when I went up there as a kid, and you're floating in the sky, and you're seeing the guy who's operating the hot air balloon. You're like, this is the coolest man alive. He's flying us through the air. Like, a pilot on a plane is one thing, but a carny-looking dude. He's like, you want to go a little bit higher, baby boy? Come on, just put, put, put your finger in my belly button. I'll make you go higher. <laughs> 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 
You like that? Now let's go lower. What do you say? <laughs> oh, you guys are bringing out an animal on me in the nice gang fest. <laughs> the sweet woman's like, thank you for ruining hot air balloons for me. <laughs> With a sodomy joke. That's disgusting. Uh, what else we got? Maybe over here. Camping trips with your uncle. Camping trips with my uncle. Uh, I saw my aunt's boobs on a camping trip once. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, oh, hell yeah, dude. That's even better than getting molested by an uncle, dude. <laughs> Willingly looking at aunt titties? That's freaking hot, dude. Uh, yeah, it was the middle of the night. It was very confusing. Because I thought I was having a dream or a wet dream. I didn't know what was going on. Middle of the night, I see ant boobs. And I'm like, couldn't you have done this outside of the tent? <laughs> Isn't that a trip outside kind of thing? Maybe, you know, not, uh, where are you looking at, my friend? You're looking sad and down at the ground. Are you okay? Did that just take you back to a memory of when your uncle touched you on a camping trip? <laughs> this dude zoned out. He's like, dude, I don't want to talk about uncles into camping trips. <laughs> Can we get a different suggestion? I really don't like what's happening right now. <laughs> Can we do hotter? Hell yeah. Uh, let's get uh, maybe one last suggestion. What do we got? Camping trips. Models. What, what? Senior collector. What else? Atmosphere models. What was it? An atmosphere model. The girls they pay to hang out with the casino. Atmosphere model. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> that's some real simp energy right there. <laughs> He's like atmosphere model. You know, we all have atmosphere models in our life. Come on, dude, they don't really, you know, they don't do anything. They don't do any kind of fellatio or anything like that. But they're just kind of around. They make you look kind of cool. Come on, you don't have a lot of atmosphere model before. You can't coin something that doesn't exist and act like it's a normal thing in society. Yeah, come on, come on. there's catalog models, there's magazine models. Yeah, atmosphere model, come on. Yeah. Oh, you never, you never brought home an atmosphere model for a Thanksgiving dinner with your family to impress them? You've never done that, Jeremiah? Real, I'm the only one. Pass the gravy, Stacy. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, who's ready to kick the show off? What do you say, huh? You guys are an amazing crowd. I can't wait for you guys to see this lineup tonight. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, this next comedian that's coming to the stage, uh, I'm so glad he's doing the show. I've been wanting to do the show for a long time. You may know him from his podcast, Bye Guys, or Real Ass Podcast. Please welcome the great Zach Amico to the stage. Come on. Guys, thank you. How's everybody's skank fest? Cool. How am I? I'm full of tiny holes and my dick hurts. I'm gonna do that shit again tonight. That suck. All right, let's try. I'm terrified of this. I don't like, I'm married to my words. I do not like improv shit. Let's see how this fucking goes. What do you guys want to talk about? AIDS now ends up later. <laughs> my, uh, my, my grandpa had, to, you said, he said dementia, right? Rick Flight is dementia. Fucking Rick G no. <laughs> you wanna talk about it? <laughs> I've co-opted the woo. So, uh, for people who don't know, uh, uh, me and Lewis did Kill Tony a few weeks ago, and, and the guest, the other guest was Ric Flair, and, uh, uh <sighs> I don't make fun of time. <laughs> it, it, okay, I really wanted it to go good. I love pro wrestling more than, and it's my favorite show. It's my thing, it's my favorite. And people are like, it's fake, whatever, fucking Game of Thrones isn't real either, suck my dick. <laughs> uh, and I, I, you grow up, you Rick Flair, you're like, that's the guy. And then you meet him, and after a minute and a half, you're like, oh shit. 
he does this all the time? Like, you'd think he would do it, and then in the back, be like, hey, nice to meet you, how are you? No. He was yelling at security. He was with three gross, and this is from me, gross women. (laughs) And his concept of reality is out the fucking door. Because he goes, these three women right here, Southwest Airline flight attendants, oh yeah. And the lady just goes, we don't, none of us work it, or none of us do that. <laughs> One of the ladies is, she had this fat black lady with him who was so drunk. Do you remember on Always Sunny when Frank was gonna marry his hooker? <laughs> so just in the green room, this is fat black lady, we're part of the flat, baby. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys watched it, but uh, there's some cuts. <laughs> Uh, and what happened with Yinsi in the episode is, is Tony brings up me and Lewis and we sit behind Ric Flair and Tony in the fucking Statler and Waldorf from the Muppet seats. <laughs> and I made some innocuous joke and he goes, hey pal, I'm way funnier than you. Shut up. <laughs> and then I went feral. <laughs> <laughs> But the one thing that, that I really wish was in it, and I want this clip so bad, he got mad at me. So, and I don't know if, uh, how many of you guys like wrestling. I just cut a Dusty Rhodes promo on him. <laughs> so he started to yell at me. I went, Ric Flair, you a goddamn yellow dog. <laughs> I ain't scared of you, Ric Flair. You bring your horseman. <laughs> Bro, I see you in Starcade at the Silver Dome. My eyes on the side of the silver dollars, Ric Flair! And we're black the same blood in the same mud! <laughs> oh. And I don't think he remembers any of it. Because he showed up fucked up, and he left way fucked up. But in his defense, he did have one baller thing because he had just come from a Comic-Con and people notice he has like a fucking like leather uh, bag. He's got like a little leather carrying bag. I know for a fact there's $20,000 in there. That was his pay from the con because all the old school guys used to be afraid of not getting paid in cash. So there was definitely that and I would assume a gun. Because wrestlers all used to shoot each other because they're crazy racists, you know? Also, if you look up Ric Flair, he called Teddy Long the N-word, so... I'm just saying, he's let out a few, too. And then there's things I don't like about him. <laughs> Let's do one more thing. 9-11. 9-11, awesome. I like talking about 9-11, you, that, you picked a fucking, okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna incriminate another comic, cause I don't ever, I don't ever like, if I have drug stories, I don't like naming the other comic, cause I don't wanna get them in trouble if that's not their fucking persona or whatever, if they have a job coming up. But I was on the road uh, once, and uh, I was sharing a room with another comic, and we were up all fucking night, and his chick, Uh, in the morning saw that he had been online for nine hours awake and she texted him and she's like where the fuck because she thought he was cheating on her and she's like where the fuck are you he's like ah I'm sitting with Zach we're sitting in a hotel room just doing some blow And my favorite, she goes, what the fuck have you and Zach been talking about by yourselves in a hotel room for nine hours? He goes, ah, mostly (laughs) 9-11. Jeremiah, come on out here, buddy.
Zach Amico, ladies and gentlemen. more during my set than I have. <laughs> uh, so Zach and I are gonna take a couple suggestions together and see what we can do with them. So, uh, so what do you guys got? New York comedy versus LA comedy. The color purple. <laughs> <laughs> the only gay guy at Skank Fest. <laughs> the color purple, let's get a review. What do you think of it? Jeremiah is such Midwestern white trash, he thinks he meant the color purple and not the fucking slavery movie, the color purple. <laughs> we did what? To who? So that, that dude's gay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Whoopi Goldberg loving ass. <laughs> well, we got another suggestion. <laughs> Original idea. Tetris. 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 Uh, were you a Tetris guy growing up? Yeah, yeah, no, a Tetris, and then, uh, dude, I'm a fucking Dr. Mario guy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I fucking smoked Lemare the other day. I, fi I fucking beat his autism. You fucking find a Pokemon Black and you take him to Dr. Mario, he don't know what the fuck to do. Did you ever get into uh, the Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh or any of that? No, no, I played um, Blue for the uh, Game Boy. Pokemon and, Blue? Yeah, the first one, and then, uh, did anybody else unlock the thing that then just crashed the game forever? Yeah. Like missing out or something? That really taught you a lot as a kid, right? Like that's what you get for fucking looking. No more Pokemon for you. Yeah, that's like, uh, you know, self, uh, you know, the erotic asphyxiation, the, like the jerking off. Like that was a kid version of that, like going to the edge and then like, you really want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> if there was rape in the Pokemon world, would it be called the Mewtwo movement? <laughs> We'll do one more. We'll do one more. That's so good. What's this? Fupas. Oh, man. Come on. How you gonna do my boy dirty like that, dog? I had to get my Prince Albert put back in yesterday morning. And I had to take it out for something. And I went to a piercing shop here in Vegas. And of course I get in. And the girl, I love her. She's a fat chick covered in tattoos. And she's got horns. And my dick hid. <laughs> I laid down on the... Because I went up to the counter. I was like, hey, this is embarrassing, but, like, I got to put my Prince Albert back in, and my dick's too little and my belly's too big. <laughs> and she's like, don't worry about it. I can't get jewelry in my pussy either. And I'm like, that's my gal. The incredible Zach Amico, ladies and gentlemen. Your next comedian coming to the stage, you may know from the Fighter and the Kid podcast and the Golden Hour. Please welcome my brother Brendan Schaub to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Come on! <laughs> Brendan Schaub! What up, Skank Fest? <laughs> Get up for Zach, man. That guy's a monster. Give it up for Zach. <laughs> Who yelled out Ric Flair? That's hilarious. 
Oh, really? Did the 80, did the 80 year old not do well? You've seen him for 30 years crash his fucking face into walls and shit. Everyone's like, I thought he'd do better, man. I thought he'd do better. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. I like how he had no fucking clue what Kill Tony was. <laughs> hey, Tony, maybe send him a link. <laughs> He's like, this is very mean. This is not what I do. It's like, oh, you fucked up. Oh, you fucked up. All right, let's kick this off. What do we got? There's so many. There's so many. Give me, give me one over here. Reddit hurts my feelings. But you know, at the same time, I get it. I'm not like Ric Flair. I fucking get it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I fucking... I, there's a lot to hate on. I get it, but they're off, man. If they met me, I think we'd be friends, but they also might kill me, so it's a dicey... I can't go in there. Like, Gomez would go in there and search through all the shit. I can't. It hurts my feelings. And I'm, not, I'm not that tough. Lewis is. I can't do it. It's fucking the worst shit you ever read in your life. I'm like, you guys are just mean, man. And there's not a therapist on this fucking planet who can navigate through that. They're all right, right, it's just online. Just ignore it. I'm like, that's easy, bitch. You're 60. What else we got? Ben Rothwell. Ben Rothwell hits very hard. What else we got? <laughs> you say Elon Musk? I, well, I, I fucking, if you follow me, I told you that fight ain't happening. That fight, all it is is billionaire boys who are bored as fuck. It's the same people that want to go to the Titanic. They're so fucking bored, have so much money. So with that, it's like, it's not fucking happening. And Elon's built like a lunch lady. <laughs> and everyone's like, I love everyone's like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, even Rogan's like, Mark Zuckerberg's pretty good at jujitsu. I'm like, he's been doing it a year. Everyone calm the fuck down. He's a white belt. What else we got? What do you say? Austin? Austin's interesting. Austin, listen, it, it, it's booming, and Joey Rogan definitely made that place boom, but it's still Austin, right? You're still in fucking Texas. It's hot as shit. I like how people leave from LA like, I just can't, it's too much here. Then they go to Austin, and it's like, bro, this is the same homeless problem. There's more liberals here than anywhere. You can't get a cup of coffee without someone with a fucking purple mullet and the pronouns on their fucking name, you know? <laughs> it's not what we're thinking, yeah. At the end of the day, it's still Austin. What else we got? Vasectomy. Vasectomy. Interest, interesting. Um, in, very interesting. Uh, I would never do it. I would never do it. Just get on TRT. It lowers your sperm count. <laughs> it's so easy. Figure it out, meatheads. What else we got? What'd you say? Tyson Fury, also very similar build to Elon Musk, body-wise, but has all the skill in the world. He's gonna beat the shit out of Francis Ngannou, but either way, Francis gets banked, so I'll take it. What else we got? Bradley Martin, Bradley Martin, 260 though. He's 260 though. People that don't follow are like, what the fuck is going on right now? What else we got? UFOs, all that shit's bullshit, don't believe it. It's all, it's just, a, it's just, it's trying to distract us from really what's going on. That's all that shit is. I like how Mexico is like, let's dip our toe in this pool. <laughs> that little bitch ass alien. We were like. <laughs> it was made all shitty by Mexicans. You're like, come on, Mexico. If you're gonna do it, dude. At least cover them in flaming Hot Cheetos. What are we? <laughs> <laughs> At least talk some fucking tahine on it or something, man. What else we got? OJ Simpson, interesting one, right? Another one. We're like, it's all good, baby, right? We've <laughs> Isn't it weird how some people are like, absolutely fucking lutely not. OJ Mike Tyson, yeah, you're cool though. It's like, but he murdered a person. They're like, dude, he's cool, man. 
What else? Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby's still touring and selling tickets. <laughs> with that woggy ass eye. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy people still buy his fucking tickets? His stash off the I'm dark web. Over Rick Flair. Rick Flair, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather see Bill Cosby on Kill Tony than Rick Flair. <laughs> I love everyone's like, God, I thought he was going to be so uh, great on there. He, uh, his punchlines are fantastic. It's all, no, he's a full blown poster boy for CTE, man. We love him, but fuck's sakes. He's ran into how many fucking ladders for you over the years? What else we got? One more. Chandler Jones, right? We see they are related. John and Chandler are related. Little CT in the fucking deep end there, dude. Hell of a player, though. Hell of a player. All right, let's bring out my boy, Jeremiah Watkins. Jeremiah, get your... One more time for Brendan Schaub, ladies and gentlemen. You, you've been doing this show for a hot second. Yeah, I did, yeah. When you first started, I was doing these with you at the store. Sure. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, absolutely. This is a better time. Heck yeah. It's yeah, it's Skankfest, baby. Uh, I heard you say you'd never get a vasectomy. I just got one, like, uh, recently. Gay. Gay. <laughs> Why would you never get one? It makes no sense, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you, how many kids do you have? Two? Two. And it's over now. It's over. Yeah, that's, so you're that's the two. point. That's you're the point. With, you're good with two, or you could get on TRT and just lower your, your testosterone and all your sperm. What is TRT your, for somebody who doesn't lift weights and stuff like that? It's not true for everybody. Whoever The meathead in the back's like, fuck that, dude. My fucking sperm's popping. Yeah. His girl's like, honey, I thought you said we were good. Yeah, yeah. this other guy's like, dude, I just drank a case of Surge, dude, and we're freaking good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like there's easier ways to go about it, man. Okay, okay, cool. Uh... <laughs> That's the only argument I got. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, let's grab some suggestions for Brennan and I to take. We'll see what we can do with them. Tupac. I like everyone's like, oh, they fucking solved the murder. It's like, did they? Oh, really? A gangster rapper gets shot 20 years ago? I don't give a fuck. Do you? Yeah. I mean, he's still dead. <laughs> yeah. That does nothing for me. Yeah. Find Jimmy Hoffa, for God's sakes. I would, I would, it would be more earth shaking to me if they actually found out uh, if the Dassies were guilty or not uh, on making a murder. Speak it. Dude, if, if they released one of those guys, I'd be like, okay, we back in the game here. That one's pretty easy to figure out though, right? It's like OJ. Uh, my favorite is Brendan Dassity. I hate that his name was Brendan because for a while he's the most trending Brendan and he's just the biggest dumbass in the world. Remember? remember? You're like, you're giving Brendan's a bad name. Oh, dude, that one. If there's, if there's one kid who struggles with English worse than me, it's that kid. Yeah. Dude. They're like, have... how do both of these guys have CT and one of them has never fought? <laughs> dude. He, I let, he admits to murder, and they're like, so you did? He's like, yeah, I, yeah, I did. They're like, oh, wow, interesting. He goes, uh, now, WrestleMania starts in about <laughs> six hours. They're like, yeah, no, can bitch, I, you're never going back you're home. You're not going there. Yeah. That's not happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently, he did it, though. There's some more stuff coming out that he did it. Really? Yeah. I'll be watching that season for sure. Who knows? I mean, yeah. That, if he really did Dude, that's like a real Lenny of, of Mice and Men kind of situation then if he did it. If he's like, I just throw toes in the fire because I thought it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's grab another suggestion. What was this one over here? Skinny jeans. Skinny, okay, Skin okay, okay. His are skinner than mine though, right? He looks like Pumpkin Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. Them bitches are painted on, but I dig it, dude. Thanks, Apparently dude. it's out. Apparently kids Is aren't it? in. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm not wearing the bag. The Jinkos? You going Jinkos? Dude, of course. I, was a, I had Jinko shorts, bro. I didn't even know they made shorts. Oh, Fuck yeah. they made shorts. I wore Jinkos back in the day, but now I can't, dude. As no? a big guy? No. Fuck no. Dude, you look like the thickest boy the, running dude. around. <laughs> and, can you imagine this dude in Jinkos just... 
just me and Big J and some Jinko. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, like you, like that, you would be Big J's gimp in Jinko. Yeah. It's just like, just fucking. We need like two fucking security guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's grab uh, one more suggestion. Boardwalk and tonsil stones. <laughs> what is a tonsil stone? I suck so many dicks. I got tonsil stones. <laughs> it's like when you get callus on your tonsils. <laughs> What, you've never, you've never thickened up your tonsils before? <laughs> What's a, do you, have you, what is a tonsil stone? He's all. He's like, well, I'm not answering now. <laughs> His wife's like, kidney stones, bitch, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's a different thing. Have you ever heard of, have you ever heard of tonsil stones <laughs> never, before? Never, I think that's a fake thing. Okay. Oh, your tonsils get like food caught in it and they just get, get inflamed? Weird. And they don't wash it off. Oh, this it's is like bacteria? a thing. Oh, apparently we're dumbasses. I guess yeah. so. We're like... <laughs> this, is the, this, is, this is the worst Scooby-Doo team ever. We're like, yeah. Zoinks, I don't know. And they're like, you guys are the re... Yeah. It's like, oh, no, Scoob, it's us again. <laughs> They knew their shit down here, though. She's like, what happens? It calcifies. <laughs> she yeah. literally's like, there's bacteria that invades the tonsils and sometimes hardens and calluses on the... <laughs> the gacky fellas, it is a real thing. So the thing <laughs> is... It... <laughs> Guys, can we go for Brendan Shop? <laughs> Thank you, Skate Fest. Love you guys. How we doing out there, huh, guys? Your next comedian coming to the stage. Ah, uh, this comedian is my girl. I love her so much. Uh, she wrote for Inside Amy Schumer. She wrote for That Damn Michael Che Show. Please welcome the wonderful, the amazing Yamanika Saunders to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Come on! So I'm supposed to take suggestions, um, which is great. I don't know, every show I do, it's like 20 white people that just walk out. <laughs> they know who I am. Oh, that's cute, he waved. Thank you, sir, for waving. Um, anybody have suggestions? Wait, I heard Patrice O'Neill. So this is not even gonna be a joke, actually, because this is something that I wanna address because, oh, 20 more white people came in. Good. <laughs> so I did um, Patrice's podcast, and a lot of guys comment about it because you guys think, like, Patrice really told me what time it was. And I let you guys have that fantasy because I know, like, when you don't get your dick sucked enough, um, who said that? You don't get your dick sucked enough? Not quite yet. <laughs> I don't even know, should I finish this story or suck his dick? It's crazy. I don't know why I put that before you guys. You guys are the worst. <laughs> suck his We ain't that bad in the writer's strike yet. <laughs> but no, Patrice was like, um, like a brother to me. So when, you know, right after that podcast, he called me and we talked on the phone for like three and a half hours. And he's like one of the sweetest guys you will ever meet. And one of the things that I appreciate about him, which a lot of you guys probably don't, is he always told me to just speak my mind and never back down, so I don't do that. So that is what I credit to Patrice O'Neill, who is amazing, amazing, inside and out, inside and fucking out. So let's get to something funny, and if somebody says fried chicken, I'm beating somebody's ass. Cause I know y'all don't know what the fuck to say to no black woman, okay? Cosby! What? Cosby! For, uh, for, okay, Cosby, who? What is that? I don't know what the fuck that is. It's what? Fried chicken. It, oh. <laughs> Who the fuck was it? Put him out! Put him out! Fried chicken! I don't know what this Tower 7 thing is.
thing is, I heard Cosby, Colonel but. Her, <laughs> <laughs> I invited my black friends here. Can you relax? <laughs> First of all, okay, if you want to fucking talk about chicken, you know good and fucking well, no white named Colonel Sanders made no fucking fried chicken like that, bitch. That was a fucking slave that did that shit. You ain't never seen no white to put together herbs and spices like that. I'm not talking about 9-11, that shit's nuts. But I will talk about Cosby. You sound like you wanted to drink of the Cosby juice. I never heard somebody say yay after Cosby. <laughs> Did, listen, Cosby was out here doing shit. <laughs> My problem is how come when shit like that get done, they don't ever come to somebody like me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Cause I, if you try to rape me, I definitely will rape you back. <laughs> Right? I would have told him, you don't even have to give me nothing to drink. I'm ready to go, okay? <laughs> Just f me into the show. That's all I need. I'll be Denise's dark skinned friend. I don't give a fuck. They didn't have no fat bitches on the Cosby show. Y'all so busy worrying about being doctors and lawyers. Where was the fat niggas at? That's what I was asking. Where the fat ones? I want a suggestion from a girl. Free the nipple. Oh, God. <laughs> the one time, Lord, I try to make women positive. You send this bitch. Did you say free the nipple? What did you say? Can I get a girl that's not a goofy bitch? Huh? Hold, hold, hey, hold, okay. So, I heard mullets. First of all, bitch, if that's who you fucking with, you got a lot of problems. I didn't even know you were still doing mullets in here. If I see anybody here with a mullet tonight, I'm definitely whipping your ass on sight. It's 2023, get rid of this hillbilly shit. Don't nobody wanna see it. Then some bitch said candy lingerie. I don't know about candy lingerie. If I had some, I probably would eat it before I start fucking. So I don't know. That's not a good thing for me. You understand? I need wool lingerie, something I can't tear through. <laughs> then what did the other girl say over here? They thems. Oh, they thems. Okay. All right, here's the thing the, with the they thems, the pronoun. Okay, I see what you, okay, this bitch trying to get me canceled. <laughs> That's what you know. They thems. So I came from a different time with the they them shit. Generation X, we don't give a fuck about they them. That's them boomers. They give a fuck. Cause boomers is old and they don't want nothing to change. So if you start putting a lot of shit in their head, they, they explode. So that's why they don't want to hear the they them shit. Now with the with the generation X, this is the thing. We didn't give a fuck about anything. Um, because they told us it wasn't gonna be no social security for us when we turned 75. <laughs> Remember that? Remember when you was 12 when we turned to the TV they said you're not gonna get $75 a week when you turn 65? We was like, fuck this place, let it burn. <laughs> so we don't care about your fucking pronouns. I will call you whatever the fuck you want me to call you to get you to fuck out my face. <laughs> you understand? I'll call you whatever you want. Whatever you want. Beat it, it, I'm done with you. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't give a fuck at, like, at all. But also, let me take the time to say this. While I will respect what you want me to fucking call you, please kind of look like what the fuck you want me to call you. Okay? For real. Like, you don't be saying you want to be she and shit and your balls is poking through your dress and you got a five o'clock shadow. I don't know what the fuck is happening here, ma'am, sir. Smur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring Jeremiah back out here. <laughs> Jeremiah! Yamanika oh, Sanders! Love you. So funny. 
All right, uh, we're gonna grab a few suggestions together, see what we can do. What do you guys got for us? What was this one up here? Birkenstocks. Do you know what Birkenstocks are? I should have asked that. I should have asked the motherfuckers if they knew what they were shouting out. You're brilliant. Cause she got quiet as a motherfucker too. Birkenstocks are the ultimate white person sandal. Mm, mm, um, they're like mm. that that leather, right? Mm. Like the leather with like the, the extra, it looks like cork that's underneath. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people from Portland wear them. Okay. Uh, if you have Birkenstocks, it comes with a Subaru. <laughs> they go kind of hand in hand. I've se- I don't know this much detail about them and I've seen them everywhere. Normally on like nerds. Yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> They're outside nerds. They're not domesticated nerds. They're outside nerds. <laughs> they're, they're stray nerds. That's what they are. Just running around, rock climbing. <laughs> Who said that? I want to give them a round of applause. Who said that? That shit was hilarious. You guys have low self-esteem. You don't even want to claim the shit that's making us laugh. Fucking A, bro. I didn't say it. That shit, outside nerd. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Lizzo, uh, R. Kelly, Holocaust. Listen, because they want, I'm going to say, let's just do Lizzo and let's do Taylor Swift because it's two different bitches, right? I heard Taylor, right, I heard Taylor here and Lizzo there twice. They really want, they want the black fat woman's experience about other black fat women, like, how many people got Lizzo before the fuck I got up here? And how many people thought this was actually Lizzo when she got yeah. up here? I've got my eyes on you, skank fest. I get my hand done, check my nail. Baby, hey, this is good as hell. Uh, I want that money that Lizzo got, shit. And I also want a bitch to stick a banana up my pussy. Uh, If you want that, that can happen this weekend. (laughs) Uh, Taylor Swift, I mean, she's on another level right now. Her and Beyonce selling out stadiums, Uh, stuff like that. Oh, you you got got opinions? Yeah, so, okay, I ain't supposed to say nothing I ever said. About, and I said a lot about the shit he just said. <laughs> How many Swifties is in here, first of all? <laughs> There's three. I am a Swiftie. A Swiftie for life. <laughs> this is what I'm going to address. Because. <laughs> if, if you are a straight man, my reality is broken. No. That- let her touch your stall. nigga gay as hell. (laughs) Is that Joe DeRosa? Let's grab one last suggestion. What was this? Crisco. Crisco. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Let me t- 
tell, first of all, I love you. You guys are amazing crowd. Amazing. Because this is the type of energy we need. We need foolishness. Now, I know good and fucking well he asked about Crisco because I'm black. I want to know what your experience was with Crisco that you said, huh? What? Oh, wait, I'm asking a n- that asked me about Crisco. She's not asking for right, more food right. suggestions, guys. Stop it. Stop it. She's looking for the person who yelled out Crisco. That's right here, the, du- the white dude in the do-rag, okay. You ain't got no spotlight, nothing. Stand up. Come here. Come here. Look at this nigga, look at him. What the fuck you got a do-rag on like that, nigga? You got finger waves? Why the fuck are you wearing a do-rag? I'm gonna fuck him later, you understand? He's like, he's like, hey, Ma, I'll put a banana in your pussy right now, girl. <laughs> Guys, keep it going for Yamanika Saunders, ladies and gentlemen. We have two comedians left. How we doing, guys? All right, your next comedian coming to the stage. You may have seen her Comedy Central special. You may have seen her Netflix special. She was also on Last Comic Standing. Please welcome the wonderful Rachel Feinstein to the stage, guys. Come on. Rachel Feinstein. Thank you, guys. I'm also Yamanika's wife, all right? So keep it going for Yamanika, everybody. I, this is my worst fear, by the way, people asking me random questions, because people always think I'm smart because I'm sarcastic and Jewish, but I have no information at all. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you guys, so keep it, re- dumb it down for me. Or I know I'm dressed like a district attorney, and I seem like I'm in charge, <laughs> but I'm just a fucking mom with a dumb Bud Light in her hands. <laughs> all right, let's go to a caller. Oh my God, that was so alarming. Did you say, I don't even know where to put this. The mic doesn't go that far. um, Did you say controlling the weather? (laughs) Is that what he said? Oh, he's talking about Jews. Yeah, well, we do. The answer is yes to that, yeah. We meet on Tuesdays and we control the weather and the media. And uh, somebody also asked me whether if there was like a section in the Torah where Jews control the interest rates. And again, the answer is yes. Let's go to a caller. Um, what'd you say? Did somebody say peaches? That was like the most innocent thing anyone's ever screamed out. Peaches and cream, sunshine, babies. What's that? You guys, how do you guys yell shit out and then get frightened afterwards? Okay, okay, only... Okay, OnlyFans, OnlyFans. All right, all right, all right let, settle the fuck down, all right? <laughs> OnlyFans. I did a roast on OnlyFans, and um, I, you know, I don't know a lot about the porn angle. I've nobody, I, I'm not good in bed. Like, you can just tell by my outfit, right? I bring very little to the table sexually. Nobody's ever been able to, like, nobody's ever even lied to me and told me I'm the best they've ever had. They haven't been able to look at me in the eyes and say that. They're like, you know what, she's, I phone it in sexually. And even my porn, very just dumbed down, just maybe a real estate agent. And at the end, they don't even have sex. They just take a nap in the house. There's a profound sadness to the porn I watch. It's very quick. Um, you guys just got so sad, too, collectively. <laughs> I can only imagine the collective filth you guys all consume every night. Um, But do you have any other questions about OnlyFans, Poppy? Do you want to explain on that? I don't expand on that. I don't know. The weirdest thing about you guys is that you scream shit out and then get like really afraid. Okay, you guys really don't care for the Jews, do you? That's all you see up here is just like the letter J. You don't even see a human being. Just greed itself. black Israelites. I mean, I know very little. You could tell me more. That's all you guys think I know about is being a Jew? I'm not even religious. Fuck all of you. 
You're just like greed, greed. Can we switch? What? Okay, thank you, thank you. That was so wholesome, motherhood. Um, you know, I have a toddler now, so she's at that age where she just like empties out every room. Like she'll just turn out a room like she's looking for coke. Like she has 24 hours to leave the country before a drug dealer shoots her in the face. But my daughter does not respect me at all. Like she can just tell I'm doing like an impression of an adult. Like she just looks at me like, I've seen your hand job jokes on YouTube. You're not in charge here. She fully dismisses me, my daughter. She looks at me like, I, I actually leaned over her the other night and I was like, I'm gonna go to work. I'll be back in a few hours. She goes, is it work? And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> that one kind of hurt. They actually asked her at her little preschool. They asked her what her mommy and daddy did and she said, my daddy's a hero and my mommy's sarcastic. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh my God, somebody got sad. That always happens to me. Like I get a few laughs and then one, oh, I hope she's okay. Does she have a place to sleep later? <laughs> All right, what else, you guys? What'd you say? Relapse, Uber? Oh, I, what? Being a real ass. Being a real ass? You know what, fuck you. All right? <laughs> I thought you said relapse which I do, I'm gonna answer that question. Um, Cause I, I like to date wild alcoholics, just throbbing alcoholics. Cause I zoom past every red flag with me. Oh, we got a lot of them here. That's my type, working class alcoholic. That's what I like. We on vacation. What's that? <laughs> you, you all, I wonder, like I have so many questions about this crowd. Like everybody I zoom past, I'm like, what's the rest of his life like? I asked DeRosa, I think he was like, they work in IT, most of them actually. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you guys are, the, you have some sort of, like you have the tightest jobs where at the end of the day, you just have to, it has to be blowing hookers after five because you're gonna fucking lose it if it's not. Like you deserve a tremendous amount of pussy because you work so hard until 4 p.m. And that's what, I, and I'd like to announce that that's what I'm giving out tonight. Just a tremendous amount of pussy. Everybody, for your country, we're just gonna be passing out ass after this. Anybody else have any questions? What's that? Ooh. Wait, what was, <laughs> wait, sit you first. Oh, cougars, um, and you said your mom. What was the other one? TikTok. Um, you know, like, here's the thing. I, TikTok, I barely know what's going on. I'm in the winter of my life. I can barely deal with this shit. I just, like, I feel like I can barely get dressed. I try to dress like whatever I think, like an Asian teenager thinks people dress like in Brooklyn. That's my goal every morning. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, I have to, my parents are a little worse. Like, my mom, like, I tried to explain to her that I had done something on Netflix. My mom goes, we tried, to, she has an actual sentence she said to me. She goes, we tried to view your Netflix program. I'm like, first of all, do you know how exhausting that just was to listen to? <laughs> and she's like, but it turns out it was a scam. I'm like, how did the largest streaming service ever personally scam Howie and Karen Feinstein? <laughs> she's like, we took all the steps to view the program. I'm like, what steps? Fuck you, what steps? <laughs> My mom actually said this to me. She goes, we mailed the DVD to Netflix. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck did Netflix receive at headquarters for my parents? I think they mailed back like Shawshank Redemption or something to jumpstart the process of watching my special. All right, anybody else? UFOs, I'm open to anything. It's the same with God. I'm like, whatever, I'm tired, fine, sure, why not? I mean, they can come. The end of the world is near, I'll tell you that. It's not good. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna be dead-eyed pushing a swing in the park, just staring into the eye of the last hurricane, like, let the sweet waters take me home to my Lord. <laughs> All right, come back here, Jeremiah. They're lighting me. These people are on my dick, and I just don't feel safe here. One more time for Rachel Feinstein, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Can I get my beer? It was so sad sure. I had to crouch and put it on the floor. Absolutely. This mommy is a little... <laughs> Fucking whatever. Who cares? <laughs> it's over. So, you know what? Fuck off, really. Because that was the beer that was backstage. Do you want to say something else about the Jews? Did you hear how many things they asked me about the there, Jews? There were a they lot do of, not care for Jews here. 
There, were, there all, and the first two minutes was all just was greed, gw- greed and the weather. And Honestly, I'm, the su- weather. I'm surprised they didn't yell out more Jewish things to me uh, during my set. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's grab a couple suggestions. Let's see what we can do with them. Fried chicken, <laughs> Fried chicken really? <laughs> really? Watermelon. These people are so racist. I need a nap. What was this? Underage drinking. Now, did you uh, did you try uh, alcohol before you were 21? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Nothing right. was okay in my life. There's a reason I'm up here listening to any of this shit. Nothing was good. I didn't run like a tight ship early on. No, I did acid when I was like 12 every weekend. Let's hear about that. I just did a hostel. I did all the drugs early. I got them out of my system. Okay. I was dating a guy in a band called Dick Sister because I'm worth it. I'm worth it. And uh, we did a, yeah, we did a hostile amount of acid together. That's a form of measurement, by the way, a hostile amount of acid when you're cutting up yours later tonight. Uh, but yeah, we, I moved to New York with Dick's sister and I, he dumped me too. And I was really sad. The guy from Dick's sister dumped you? He sure did. <laughs> I would just go to Dick's sister's shows and just stare at him, just real unstable. Just my head was just rolling around like, I'll have him at the end of the night. He'll be inside me and all will be well. <laughs> And then he dumped me right after I moved to New York with him. And I wasn't expecting the dump. Usually you can feel a dump collecting, like a soup, or it's brewing for a few days. I was like eating a bagel. I was like, wait, what? I'm getting dumped right now? My father And not because she's Jewish. Continue. Yeah, fucking, you know what, you guys? All right. Uh, Stop it, guys. Stop it. They don't even see a human being. They just see like a menorah and like some hands going like this, just rubbing coins together. (laughs) They're like, man, that's crazy. That dreidel's talking right now, dude. It's crazy. Oh, my God. So, so how does he end up breaking up with you? Is it over um, the phone? He dumped is me it... in the kitchen, Dick's sister. And then my father had to come back to New York. How sad is this, you guys? Um, my father had to drive back up into New York and like get me other, after I was like freshly dumped. I had to pack all my things in my, the Feinstein's grocery getter and go back to Bethesda again. It was real dark. And then I came back again. He like kept undumping me and redumping me. Oh. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah, you guys, so you can fucking lay off the shoes, all right? It hasn't been easy. I know I'm up here dressed like a UPS worker and you think I have it all figured out. Now, was your dad, was he cool about like when you would get back together with him or like was he like an I told you so kind of guy that was like, how many times do I have to tell you the guy from Dick's sister isn't a quality guy? <laughs> my dad didn't care at all. I've never had a protective man in my life. Like my, even when my dad walked me down the aisle, he was like in a rush. He's like, come on, let's go. We gotta go. Like, I'm like, do you have somewhere to be after that? Like, <laughs> the game's on in an hour. Come yeah. on. <laughs> I've never had somebody be protective over. No one's ever like put their hand on my lower back and like, you know, like led me through a room. They're always just like, you good to get there? I'm like, it's my fucking wedding. Fuck you. You ha- now yeah. your husband is a firefighter. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So do you feel that presence from your husband a little bit more? No, so- we could give a shit because he's the least, like the least jealous guy ever. I'd have to go missing for weeks before my husband would look for me. Yeah, because they don't like the thing is with firemen, like they just want to get back to the firehouse. Like whatever's happening out, it's like comics kind of. Like whatever is not happening at the firehouse isn't like fun or compelling. He's not going to ask me about my day. Like he didn't. I did, this is an actual true story. I was doing a special for Netflix. My husband texts me a picture of the gas bill before I went on. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. He's a deep, deep moron. Like he doesn't get it at all. And he bought our house with Bitcoin. I will say that. He did something right. He got us a house with Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah, we, right. we're living in a Bitcoin house because. Does that feel weird to live in a Bitcoin house? It does. Does it feel yeah. like kind of dirty money? Especially because like, yeah. I told him to sell it. Like I was like, you idiot, sell this shit. And then he's like, it bought us like a five bedroom house. Yeah, that's all Bitcoin. A, yeah, everything we, we just live off crypto, but I still have to pay the <laughs> gas bill. Fucking asshole. If it was up to, and the firemen fix everything in my house. So like, there's always some, like, some guy named Anthony fixing the fucking plumbing in my home. And I'm like, Anthony is not a fucking plumber. He's a lieutenant at Ladder 21. <laughs> There's always a fucking guy out, a fireman, and our lights are flickering. I'm like, because it's because a fucking fireman is fixing them. Then if, if it was up to these guys, they would just paint like a fucking mural of Jordan Peterson sucking off the founding fathers outside her house. 
I love how much these guys appreciate that. Like, I'd like to see it. I'd pay a handsome fucking sum for that. Well, one of the guys came, comes out to my house, one of the many firemen that's working at it right now, knocks on our door, answers the door. He goes, listen, I do not answer the door until the husband is present in the home. I'm like, you know what? Fucking get in here and fix the toilet because we don't have a real plumber. Fuck you. Right. You know? Also, like, I don't come in until your husband is present. I don't enter any property. Like, that sounds so suspicious. Like, that's something a parole officer told you to say, you know? It's basically like being, and I had nothing to do with that string of murders in the 70s either. You're not setting me up for any of this. (laughs) Uh, Let's grab one last suggestion, guys. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Mm. Hmm? What was the last thing? (laughs) Well, it was Donald Trump. It was disappointment was up there. And what was this one over here? That's the thing with these people. They're so anti-Semitic, but they're also really frightened at the same time and kind of shy. You can't be both. You can't be like, fuck the Jews, you control the weather. I'm feeling a little bashful. Fuck you. (laughs) And if you control the weather, could you maybe make it kind of breezy tomorrow? (laughs) Because that would be kind of good for me. (laughs) Guys, keep it going for Rachel Feinstein. Thank you, guys. We've reached our final comedian of the night. Uh, you may have seen his Amazon Prime special. He recently was on the Joe Rogan Experience. Please welcome the amazing, the incredible Sam Talent, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Sam Talent. <laughs> Sam, Sam, no. Sam, no. Sam, no. Sam, Sam. That's what I want. A group of white people rallying my name. That's how all great social movements begin. One charismatic leader taking a chance on facial hair. Oh, that guy was vaguely black and he's leaving? What have you created here? A monster. Yes. (laughs) Uh, We're gonna grab a couple suggestions. uh... T-shirt cannon. (laughs) T-shirt cannons? That's how I want to fucking end my own life. I just want to load a potato gun with big dog shirts and fucking spray my brain all over the inside of that Little Caesars pizza. It's just fucking brain matter and skull stuck in the world ceiling forever. Were you a big dog uh, shirt guy? when? Yes, when I, was... I was a fat child, yes. Thank you, Jeremiah. Were you a big dog t-shirt guy? Yeah. And I had to wear Jinkos because they were prescribed by a doctor. (laughs) I wasn't wearing them to be cool or to hide a fucking baseball bat so I could go to the Juggalo Ramble, no. I had to wear them because my thighs fit inside of them, yes. Big dog shorts or shirts, they were great. Also, Big Johnson, remember that? Uh, Nope. (laughs) Great hosting so far, all right. I, I was a husky kid. I wore husky jeans. I was and stuff shaped like that. and built like a husky. I had to I had to eat food out of a bowl on the ground. Cause I broke every chair that my parents bought for the kitchen. So please quit trying to fucking steal Valor right now. You think I'm fat guys stealing Valor right now? I think you're trying to empathize with a group of people that you uh, want to be a part. You're wigging out on fat guys right now. You're fucking chode switching, which... Because that's... So, I'm sorry, maybe you were fat. I couldn't care less. I'm currently fat. No one... No one's less happy for a formerly fat guy than a currently fat guy. So, save your story, Slim Jim, all right? I'm I'm sorry I transitioned, okay? Yeah, yeah. When I need to clean my fucking gutters, I'll come for your torso, all right? But you're skinny. That's the humorous intent. Uh, T-shirt, cannons. Earthquake, chub rub. Chub rub? 
<laughs> is now is a chub rub something that you have coined or is that like you an said you were a fat kid and you don't know about chub rub <laughs> you have just been outed as a fraud in front of all these people <laughs> he coined chub rub yes we're looking at a modern day chaucer over there <laughs> when's your next book coming out Chub rub is a affliction that is uh, indigenous to the inner thigh of the fat man <laughs> and the under bosom of the uh, woman with the heaviest of all. So yes, chub rub, it's an affliction that uh, my fellow wads know about. The inner thigh. Yes, your fucking inner thigh looks like a Twizzler's pull and peel. <laughs> and, but guess what? No one's trying to yank it or lick it, no. Your wife just wants to rub solve on it like a fucking undersaddle of a donkey in the Old West. <laughs> Did you invent chub rub? I was fat for a week. I like you, but that was, you showed your ass on that one. Uh, let's grab one more suggestion. Yeah, I have a compression sock on, all right? You know why? Because I got tired of getting so much pussy on the airplane. So... The stewardesses couldn't do fucking... Let me do the jokes, all right? When I'm struggling, then you can chant my name. And then we can go round up whichever marginalized group you're mad about, all right? <laughs> round them up and say, thank you, all right? Thank you for being a part of the American tapestry that enriches our country. <laughs> yeah, I have a compression sock because I had stasis dermatitis from a football injury. I am not the only person who also could have pretended to play for the CU Buffaloes on this show, all right? <laughs> Yamanika, yeah, just keep yelling slurs. <laughs> Let's grab one last suggestion. <laughs> video games? Was this over here? Did you invent video games? <laughs> is that yours? Sorry, buddy. No, this is perfect. This is exactly I know I'm why killing, I killing, but that's show. not what I'm upset about. Uh, <laughs> It's impossible that you were fat. You have none of the trappings of a formerly fat guy. You have confidence and cheekbones. I don't care. Dude, All right? okay, to give you an example. Ah, don't touch me. <laughs> to give you an example. Don't steal my essence, vampire man. All right? <laughs> I touch you, I'm like, oh, is that ranch? What is that? Yeah. yeah. You blowed up like a yeah. fucking... Someone pulled the ripcord on a human balloon, yes. Okay, to give you an example, this is the last thing I'll say. Before, when I was fat, my nose was normal size, and then I lost the weight, and the nose came out. So I had so much fat that it, it balanced the nose better. Wow, where's your parade? <laughs> Did we all have a good time tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Keep clapping as you're walking out. I know you're gonna see the next show for all the comedians that you saw tonight. Yes. This show premieres on YouTube every other Monday. Check it out, youtube.com slash at standofots. Subscribe, I love you guys. Thank you so much, Gang Fest. This is a phenomenal evening. I'm Jeremiah Watkins, good night. Thanks for watching Stand Up On The Spot. Now hit that subscribe button so we can hit 50,000 subscribers. And make sure you leave a like and a comment before you go. Thanks.